induced vasodilation. Oh, okay. Hormone induced vasodilation and collagen deficiency or lack of elasticity. Are these two cause and effect or not? I think they're uh, I think they're absolutely correlated. So if you have if you have a blood vessel that dilates under the influence of estrogen and you're um, already um, and you have a connective tissue disorder, you're already dilated, when estrogen hits it, you just open wide and you just leak a lot of fluid. I, I haven't proven that. I don't know if anyone's proven it. Um, there's very little data on estrogen. I will say that for the data on estrogen, too little is not good and too much is not good. So I, we really need people to do research. I found a couple of ladies who are really into hormones and vasculature and I said, hey, you should look into lipedema. And they said, we did, we looked at your website. I'm like, good, we need to talk. <laughs> so, is there a way to determine how obese a lipid lady is? How much of the fat is excess normal fat? Nope. <laughs> I'm with Dr. Stitz, it's really hard. Um, but I think that um, if you follow Dr. Stitz's recommendations and you eat um, if, if you have um, hypertension, you have metabolic syndrome, you have diabetes, you probably have excess obese fat, and so you really need to work on, um, you know, work with a nutritionist or work with someone knowledgeable in the lip field who can help you um, with your nutrition and see if you can lose any weight at all. But if you are, if you are obese, you know, really obese, you probably have some excess obese fat. I wish there was that magic wand and we could just light it up. I was once told wearing compression a lot can weaken muscle tissue, true or false? False. <laughs> if you have heavy filled lippy boobs, okay, first of all, they're not called boobs, they're called girls. <laughs> what can be done? Can the lip be sucked out, removed from the chest? <laughs> Suck out lippy fat from the boobs. Sorry, the girls. I don't think you have lippy fat and, and you have girls. <laughs> How do you know? Um, it's not painful. They are painful. I think that it's fluid, to be honest with you. I really do. I think he's right. Um, I think you can grow extra fat in there, but I do think it's fluid. And I think your focus should be getting that fluid moving in your body. Complete decongestive therapy, wearing your compression, doing your exercises, and um, doing your lymphatic drainage of your boobs, right? They, 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 they drain to the axilla, so move them up. <laughs> okay, dense breasts, dense breasts are not lip. They're not, and mammograms are very painful. If you um, do not want to undergo um, mammograms, ask your doctor for an MRI. You, you lay at a table and they hang the girls through these holes and they do the MRI and it doesn't hurt at all. Can you take Camphoria, Parviflora, and Dextroamphetamine together? Yeah, but what's the point? I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I mean, you, you could, but I don't think it's going to hurt you at all. And maybe there's, maybe Camphoria, I mean, Camphoria, Parviflora does decrease that immunoglobin E induced inflammation. If you have allergies, it might not be a bad idea. Can we put together CME credit for doctors? Yes, and that is something that we are going to be talking about. That's like her number one mission. It's coming, and we've had some volunteers at this conference. Or it'll be for yeah, it'll be for healthcare providers. Absolutely. I just got the chills on my legs from that one. <laughs> I have goosebumps. What do you think of hormone replacement therapy after hysterectomy? If you're young, if you're a young woman and you still need to maintain your bone mass, I don't think it's a bad idea, as long as you use low-dose hormone replacement therapy. Um, just don't go on the birth control pill if you can handle it. Go on to like 0.5 micrograms of estradiol a day with maybe some micronized progesterone every day, 100, 100 milligrams, you good? Do you see children during puberty? I do, I'm allowed to see teenagers in my clinic um, only on Monday mornings. <laughs> Can you have Ehlers-Danlos and not be hypermobile? You, uh, yeah. I know there's, they say there's this wide clinical um, spectrum. Um, 
So, and I've seen a, a wide variety myself, you know, people like bending their fingers way back and then someone who can just bend it to 90 degrees. So, um, I would say yes, and my feeling is, if you have lip and hypermobility, you, um, and you're damaging your joints over time, you know, as you age, and your lip tissue is sitting around your joints causing more damage, those, those joints are gonna stop being as hypermobile, and that puts them at an even greater risk for damage. Dr. Herbs, there's, there's another clinical sign sometimes if you don't have the hypermobility in your hand, you can touch your tongue to your nose or take both your palms. The palms namaste like signs. Those sometimes are <laughs> sex. The reverse <laughs> namaste the reverse signs. Signs. Yeah, and the, then the, the tongue to the nose is Borland sign. Yeah, yeah those are... Um, sometimes, yeah, and I think I think anytime you see hypermobility in a region, it's, it's definitely a reason to take notice. Thank you. If you don't meet the Baton score, they call it benign hypermobility syndrome. Yes, but there's some new data showing that they're most likely the same thing. I think yeah. we just don't understand it enough. We We're trying to figure it out and then separating them and putting them together and then it's like eat eggs, don't eat eggs. Eat eggs, don't eat eggs. Are there different standards for blood pressure, cholesterol, heart rate than the normal standards for lipid hemo patients? I think if you are a lipid patient and you're, you're hypertensive and you have diabetes and you have hyperlipidemia, this is not good. Because you're supposed to be um, extremely healthy. You're supposed to have no kind of, you're supposed to have negative metabolic syndrome. So if you're developing this, you really need to get with your healthcare provider and really work on getting your health under control. because. I mean, things have changed. Now there is inherited lipid disorder. There are inherited lipid disorders. You could be a lipid lady and have an inherited lipid disorder. And you could have an inherited um, blood pressure disorder. But if you were at one point, you had low blood pressure, and your glucose was perfect, you had no problems, and over time you're getting worse, I think that's, that's I, I'd be very concerned. Last one, if a mom of toddlers who works full time too, has one hour to herself a day, is that time best used exercising or using the flexi touch? Exercising, definitely exercising. Because the flexi touch is only treating one limit at a time and I love flexi touch. I mean, I am like Ms. Flexi Touch. <laughs> I, I really, I, I disagree a little bit with um, Dr. Norton. I feel that um, having a pump at home empowers you to take care of yourself. It feels amazing. It reduces your fluid. It's not, it's different from lymphedema. It's lip treatment. And I, until someone proves me wrong, I'm going to continue to support pump therapy at home. And I think Flexi Touch is top of the line. I think Lympha Press is also kind of nice for people who don't want to just do one leg at a time. You can do both. Um, but what were we talking about? <laughs> so, but I think I would rather you got on that. I would, I would, I want every, I would love it if every lippy lady had a whole body vibration machine. And even if you only had five minutes, I would want you on a whole body vibration machine twice a day. That, it really moves lymphatic fluid like nobody's business. And I, I've seen lippy ladies, so I put, a, put them on selenium, dextroamphetamine, and they bought a whole body vibration and they wear their compression religiously. I've seen them come back into my office and I'm like, who are you? Where's your sister? Because they have absolutely shrunk. They got rid of every signal, every signal, abnormal fat cell in their body. <laughs> and they still have their lippy tissue, but their skin is sagging. It's like they had gastric bypass. So, and I think you could probably do the same thing with your Camphoria parva floor and your butcher's broom and your selenium. You don't need to go the dextroamphetamine route. Sometimes it's hard to get and doctors don't like to write the prescription. I do, but they don't. Because I know it works for you and they are afraid of the FDA and they don't want to be tied to you by that handwritten prescription every month. But that is what I, I would buy and invest in one of those. Thank you very much. Can I um, Can you overdo that? I think um, if you have like spinal problems and you have disc disease and you have neck disease and you have a knee that's about ready to collapse, it may not be the best thing in the whole world for you. And I don't think you need to do it for hours. Um, I think you can do the vertical vibration for a shorter period of time. Um, and I think the oscillating is great. 
for ladies who have a lot of lumps of fat because it really shakes those and you really need those puppies to move. If you have really large folds of fat, you might want to wear a little compression on them so they're not flying all over the place <laughs> and you're doing any more damage. So in that kind of sense, you can do too much. <laughs> I was really um, inflamed, and I got on it. It said the book said two minutes. And I thought six, <laughs> and I was really sick. I had flu-like symptoms, vomiting. Um, that lasted for about 12 hours, and we determined later it was because it was very toxic. So it got the fluid moving, which was it should it was doing what it was supposed to be doing, but a little too fast and you have to Yeah, I agree. If you're really toxic, you're gonna you're gonna move lymphatic fluid, you're gonna move a lot of that um, those cell waste and other cell yuckiness out of your tissue and you could detox. You could feel um, sick and I and I would say great, but then you know that you can do only one minute when you feel better, right? And then you work your way up. And I would never put some on for one on for 30 minutes to start. Always just a few minutes and then work your way up. And I'm sure if you go over and talk to these professionals over here, you could get a little a lot more information on what time and what settings would be best for you.